This is Exercise Research Reviews, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the Fick equation and how it relates to exercise. So a man named Adolf Fick was the man to create the Fick equation. Uh, he was born in Kassel, Germany in 1829. He originally studied math and physics. However, um, after his formal training, he decided to go into medicine. And kind of his claim to fame is he was the first person to measure cardiac output using this technique. So a bit of background about the Fick method. Uh, this is kind of the general blueprint and output um, of how the Fick method is employed. So as you can see, we have uh, inspired volume and the O2 uptake uh, that is calculated. And this is done by sampling the uh, arterial and venous pressure. Uh, so we have O2 uptaken into the lungs. Um, we have a arterial uh, value, and then we have some of the O2 released at the tissue based off of the metabolic demand required. And then after uh, that metabolic demand, we have the kind of post artery uh, oxygen. And this will give us a differential between uh, the O2 that was taken in and the O2 that is expired. So now let's take a real quick look at how we calculate VO2 with the Fick equation. So first we have cardiac output. Again, we talked about this in the previous uh, lecture. So this is just stroke volume times heart rate. And this is the total amount of blood that is pumped through the body each minute. Then we have the AVO2 difference. So that is the differential in oxygen from the arteries. So the oxygen that is being provided to the tissue um, subtracted from the leftover venous oxygen that's left in the blood. And then this results in our VO2, which is our total oxygen consumption. So a little bit of a closer look at what that means. Again, we have the heart rate, which is in beats per minute. So the number of times your heart beats each minute. Then we have the stroke volume, which is the liter of blood um, that is pumped throughout your body for each heartbeat you have. So in total, your cardiac output is the liters of blood that are pumped throughout your body per minute. Then again, we have this arterial O2, venous O2, which is given in milliliters of oxygen per liter of blood. So this is calculating, you know, what is the concentration of oxygen in the arterial blood, subtracting the concentration of oxygen in the venous leftover blood. And then finally, we have a uh, body oxygen consumption. So this is referred to as liters of O2 per minute. And this is just the total amount of uh, oxygen that your body is able to process each minute. So I always found that examples help, help kind of reinforce these principles. So let's take a look at a real quick example of calculating VO2 using the Fick equation. So here we have a person who has a resting cardiac output of about four liters per minute. And we, as we said in that cardiac output uh, video, a resting uh, cardiac output of four to five liters per minute is pretty normal for most individuals. Then we have information, we sample from the arteries and we find that the concentration of the arteries is 20 milliliters of O2 per 100 milliliters of blood. So that means the concentration of oxygen in the blood is about 20 milliliters uh, per 100 milliliters of blood. And then we sample from the veins, which are returning the blood to the heart. And we find that the concentration is 15 milliliters of O2 per 100 milliliters of blood. And in between, uh, in the capillaries, we have this kind of working or metabolic muscle that is using some of the oxygen. So uh, let's take a look at actually calculating what this person's VO2 is. So now for a little bit of math, but it's not anything complex, so don't worry too much. So first we have to convert the liters of blood per minute that we have into milliliters of blood per minute. Because remember, again, our uh, concentration values over here are in milliliters for blood. So we can multiply our four liters of blood to, or by a thousand, because there's a thousand uh, milliliters in one liter of blood, to get 4,000 milliliters. 
then we can multiply the 4,000 milliliters of blood per minute times the five milliliters of O2 per 100 milliliter of blood. And this is because we are looking at the difference between 20 and 15, which gives us a value of five. So right here, five. And then after the, again, four liters to 4,000 milliliters, we have 4,000 milliliters of blood. And this is good because we have milliliters, milliliters. And then we also are dividing by milliliters of blood and the 4,000 milliliters of blood are here. So essentially we get to cancel these two units out. And this leaves us with 4,000 times uh, five milliliters of O2. So that would give us um, about 20,000 milliliters of O2 per 100 uh, milliliters or per 100 minutes. And this would result uh, in about 200 milliliters, because if you think about it, you have 4,000 times five, and then you divide by 100. You could also just divide by 100 here and knock off these two zeros, and you would get 40 times five, which would give you 200 milliliters of O2 per minute. So another thing we can do is with this 200 milliliters of O2 per minute, uh, we can multiply it by one liter of oxygen um, divided by 100 milliliters of O2. And that can give us uh, the answer in terms of liters. So what we found is, is that this individual's VO2 is 0.2 liters of O2 per minute. And that seems pretty low and that makes sense, again, because this person is at rest and is not exercising. So let's take a look at what exercise will do to your VO2 and how that relates to your FIC uh, equation values. So that's all for today's lecture. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like. Um, if you want to see more exercise research videos in the future, uh, please subscribe um, and uh, make sure to stick around for future exercise lectures as well as uh, research and exercise research reviews. If you are looking to uh, get a textbook for your exercise physiology class, I have the information on the textbook I used uh, during my undergrad as well as some cheaper versions as well as a more uh, kind of current version that your professor may or may not want you to get. So that information is down in the link below. So that's all for now. We'll see you next week for another exercise research review.